just got done with an amazing recording session with one of the students in the sales boost camp. I'm actually going to give you um, some, a sneak peek of some of the sales boost camp mentoring calls. I actually collect them within a module called mentors library. The students within the course who are already registered in the course and are participating in this program find that module rather helpful because whenever you get a chance to spend some time with your mentor or your coach, sometimes you can forget to bring up certain topics. And so having access to other mentoring sessions, you're able to, to actually learn from the topics that they bring up. And so this module has become very helpful with them learning and, and kind of covering other topics that they may have forgotten. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek of those. But before I go in, let me share with you one of the most common uh, questions that I get about the sales boost camp because it might be a question that you have as well and the question is like hey Daniel I'm a you know I'm an outside loan officer my I don't get leads I don't work in a call center my whole goal is to generate referral partners and approach realtors is this for me and the answer to that is yes it's specifically for you you see I've recognized that most of the programs that I had online was really for refinance uh, business over the phone. And so I've created the Sales Boost Camp to also give my experience and give the, the right mentoring and the coaching to loan officers who are only out in the field actually generating relationships with realtors and creating their brand to attract other referral partners. So the answer to it is yes, and get a chance to actually view some clips from the mentoring sessions that I've had with some of the students and understand that this is this is an opportunity for you. If you want to invest in yourself, if you want to have a mentor on your side that not only is in the trenches with you per se, actually closing business today using the techniques that I share. But if you don't know by now, you know I work in, with one of the nation's largest mortgage bankers in the country. And with over 3,100 employees spread out through the country, I'm fortunate to lead the number one team with the company. So I can give you real insight, real relevant and current information that is not only going to help catapult your business, but it's going to help you reap the rewards of being a mortgage licensed loan officer. And when you have a chance to invest in yourself to learn the right ways, not only do you save a ton of time, not only do you save yourself from having to chase prospects and try to fight for business and go through that grind, but you learn ways to generate consistent revenue. And that's really what the benefit of being a loan officer is, is you get to control your own income. The sky really is the limit and it really is up to you, but it does take time and it does take the decision to invest into yourself. Here's the upside is that with your investment, not only are you learning the strategies to recoup your investment, but you're learning the strategies needed to establish yourself as the expert within your community so you can find the consistent income to keep you at the top producing level. And I, I invite you to learn more about it. Go to salesremaster.com. The program is called the Sales Boost Camp. And here are a couple clips from the mentoring sessions. Enjoy. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're crafting a message that speaks to future referral partners. Because what I've found is that realtors don't want to be educated on products as much as they want to know that they're, they have certainty in dealing with you. And now it becomes a piece of information that shows proof from people who are like them. So other realtors. And as you build that base, it positions you more favorably to approach A1 realtors in the area because you have a track record. And so the only thing to really take away their attention from their preferred lender is considering the sharing the loyalty with another reputable person or agent or loan officer. And why it's important to distinctively make it your own separate to your company's website or your company's resources is because it's you, you're branding you, you're not necessarily branding caliber. It's like a brand name, right? But at the, at the end of the day, what, what, what wears the brand is the person wearing the brand. So that there, it really is custom fit to you. And so you may have an option to create like a, a business page that's all about caliber. It's all about your mortgage company. It's all about your programs. It's all about non-QM. But the problem with that is though, is that you now introduce the need for compliance, regulations, fine print, APRs. And so the goal though, is to, let's use Sales Remastered for an example. Um, the reason why it attracts like-minded people is because it's not a sales pitch. It, it really is genuine information. It's, it's content that is useful. 
and and it's content it's information that people don't necessarily have access to right we want to get to a point where we actually attract realtors realtors want to buy us coffee they're the ones that want to call us back if anything they're the one that wants to call us period and so that's the ultimate end result but the question is well how do we get there and it's, it's going to be a few steps but if you if you if you do it right and you you have the patience you take the time and i'm going to show you some ways to generate some income in the interim in, in the interim so that you you know you never get to a point where you're like damn i, I really need some business hey man can you send me some loans you, you know i never want you to get there and i'm gonna show you a couple hacks to never get there you see networks and communities are the new commodity and the reason why we want to get in the sheets with realtors is because we want access to their community when you really think about it right we want access to their clients. We want access to their, their clients' clients, their clients' referrals, their clients' neighbors. And so ultimately what we're doing is just trying to expand our network. And you could do this with not only photographers, not only real estate agents, but CPAs, insurance agents, life insurance agents, right? You could do yeah. these with wedding planners, um, uh, life, life coaches, like CPAs. There's just a, a wealth of different kind of veins that we can also provide value to. And it starts with establishing a community use it in your in your meeting with realtors but also with your um introductions to brokers you know because your okay. your goal is should be should be to to do two things not only to approach realtors but also approach brokers and even when you start to build your new relationship with these agents and you close transactions it should always also be a follow-up with the broker um you know right after that agent leaves you a review right so you have them leave you a review talking about and, and you want to manufacture it so in some way you can uh per, you can almost tell them what to say otherwise you know if you just leave it up to an agent and they're busy they should be like yeah. yeah you know what i mean they're just gonna be like yeah well, brent was dope or brent was cool you know what i mean yeah. like it's not going to be really specific <laughs> so you right. kind of want to um have like a set template maybe keep it in the notes of your of your iPhone or whatever. Hey, man, I'm gonna send you a quick text and then always make it as easy as possible. So there's a, always a link that goes you can't just say, Hey, um, go to my Facebook page, you actually have to leave a link. So it's just a quick push of a button. Um, yeah. And if they've left you a review elsewhere, like, let's say if they've left you a review, and I would even go with my past to my past clients too, you know, yeah. and be like, Hey, I'm not trying to solicit any business. I'm, I'm actually with a new uh, new company, if I can ask you to to copy and paste your review from this link, and then you yep. you know what I mean, it's all mapped out. And yeah. You just make it real easy for them to do it for you. Um, and you know, in some way, if you can manufacture that, I think that will help you a great deal in trying to break out into as a mortgage banker. You know, because no one can really distinguish when those reviews came, right? Yeah, it, they all all of it just looks somewhat new. It just it's all sure. in their perception. When you when it seems like you don't want it or you don't need it, it's it's just that much more attractive. Does that make sense? You you radiate okay. that confidence, and I think that's a secret hack that that a lot of people overlook. And and you're gonna see it even in your own team, and you probably already seen it before because you've been in the business for so long, where you you kind of hear it through their tone, right? Like you could tell when an agent's hurting. You can tell when the agent is just desperate for business because they're they're rushing through, and you you want to avoid that mindset. And so yeah. I guess where I'm getting at is that these rewrites, these everyone calls them different things, recaptures, redos or whatnot. But I'm, I'm talking yeah. about specifically targeting departed agent leads. Everyone's approaching like realtors and be like, hey, let me let me tell you why I'm super cool. You know, yeah. let me let me let me educate you about this program. And what you're going to yeah. do is you're just going to end up pushing out the people you should be working with and attracting newer agents who don't know anything else. You know, sure. like, yeah, let me, I want to hear about it because they're using you for information because they have no idea that the programs <laughs> exist, right? <laughs> and when you approach a realtor in that way, now it's, now the, the tonality and the engagement becomes a little bit different. It's not about you wanting their business. You position yourself as, why should I let you have my business? Does that make hey. sense? That's much hey. more powerful because Absolutely. when, when realtors get that same, uh, a low pitch of like, hey, we close super fast, or you know the the traditional method. They're they're you know they're they're not really interested, right? But if they know that they can use your uh, systems to put 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 more money inside their pocket, now you become unique, and mm -hmm. and that is how you're going to start positioning yourself. But as you establish these relationships, whether they're with newer realtors or seasoned realtors, just be very coherent that. 
each transaction in each business, each testimonial and each referral is to continue building your book of business. Right. right. And so um, and then that becomes, you know, your repeat business, your referral connections to more people who could be selling their home or buying their home. And as you collect these these leads of people who are thinking of selling their home, that becomes, again, asset to a realtor. Right. Because when you have your top 10 or top 15 assets or I'm sorry, top 10 or top 15 um, uh, VIP realtors that you're really targeting, that's mm -hmm. what you use to approach them. Right. Yeah. Like, hey, I, I know someone who's actually selling their house. I really like the, your, I really like your work. Um, you're pretty established. And I want to put I want to, you know, put my connection uh, in good hands. And as a matter of fact, I have a community where I'm I'm able to kind of uh, attract a lot of these type of leads, a lot of people selling their home and they need a realtor to not only sell their home, but they're looking to buy another home. Right. Right. And the caveat is, though, is that if I give you access to these leads you you do me uh, uh right by saying by uh by not trying to refer them to your referral partner right, right. these are these this is my community don't don't take them to your preferred lender the home builder lender you know um and if if you treat them right i got many more where that came from so if i you know get that appointment with the realtor sit down whatever coffee lunch however um and it goes well what what kind of follow up do you think? I mean, how quickly follow up and um, should it be a phone call follow up, email follow up after yeah. our first meeting together? Sure. So I think this is where empathy is really going to kick in. So during the first meeting, you you know, it's more about like um, it's more about having a less aggressive approach, like a less salesy approach. Right. Right. Um, where you're constantly planting seeds like, hey, you know, if my if my systems do not serve you, I'll be the first one to tell you to not use me, you know, mm -hmm. so you got to kind of plant that seed and then say, but if it does serve you best, then, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about working more uh, together, you know, what the next mm -hmm. steps are. Um, but what I found is that emails are emails and text messages are better than actual phone calls because you're you're being compatible with that realtor's time. So right. instead of always calling them, like, because that can tend to become intrusive, mm -hmm. where realtors are, are technically like us, they're, but, but they're more self-employed, right? They right. don't necessarily have the resources that we do. Um, they don't have the base pay. Sometimes they don't have, the, like, a guarantee. And so they're, they're already busy as is. So they're out right. farming and looking for business, where I think that if their first contact and the first engagement is more align with them right like we want to ask them hey, you know so what are you doing right now to get to get your business you know and mm -hmm. uh other questions like um um you know what what do what would you change about the finance process right now if you could you know these are these are key questions that are gonna open up their likes Right. But but covertly, where you're not saying, "Hey, how can I be your preferred lender?" <laughs> right? That's a little too straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. But when you assess this information and you're actually writing it down, your follow up is going to be tailored specifically to them, right? So they're opening up to you. You're taking notes that that this particular realtor doesn't like how their preferred lender, you know, doesn't keep them up to date, or it's very hard to get in contact with, or um, they they that preferred lender relies on the realtor to update everyone involved and so you're right. picking up this information to where at the end of your first engagement say okay great well i appreciate you sharing the time you know i'm gonna put some thought together based on our meeting and i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure that i could serve you best you know my systems will be be compatible for you and i can give you benefit i'll get back to you you know and then yeah. then it's, it's very intriguing rather than than selling them on the first date Right. Yeah. So the first yeah. date is really about kind of learning about them and and how you can benefit them. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the follow up now, it's it's kind of like a pitch on the prospect like, hey, um, Jim, I got an idea. I want to run it by you, you know, but I want to get your feedback first. So if you're if if you know that this because some realtors are not text, you know, they don't like text. They don't like emails. They prefer phones. So that's mm -hmm. where empathy kicks in. So if you know that they prefer phone, then you want to plan for that phone call. It's, a, it's basically your, your follow-up is a close, 
Right. Um, and, and, but if you, if you know that this person's always, you know, they always kind of forward you to voice message and they, they prefer emails and texts, then you just have to make a note of that where, okay. you know, like, okay, I'm gonna approach this person through, through an email, uh, or a text and say, Hey, you know, maybe I'll text them and say, Hey, I just sent over an email. I got a couple ideas, reply back when you get a chance Perfect. and then yeah. open up the dialogue that way. But when you, yeah. when you do the follow up, it's going to be custom based on their information. So if you find out what they're doing is um, they're advertising with with uh, local businesses or they're putting their name on bus stops or they're using social media, um, you know, you can tailor your follow up based on how your system can help them create more business. Right. Um, Also, if they tell you that, you know, the things that they didn't necessarily like about the finance process, you can you can sprinkle little pieces of how you are, are able to provide a solution for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So like he says, um, you know, I, I, you know, uh, one thing that I don't like about our, the finance process is how the loan officer is, is hard to reach, you know, so you can kind of put a little tagline in there and say, I'm always easily available. You'll have my cell phone, my, you know, I'm, 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 if I'm in a meeting, I get back to you right away. Um, if, you know, if you know, any transactions, why realtors really like working with me is because I'm the one who keeps everyone uh, up to date. You know, I'm the very, I'm, once I know, everyone else knows. I don't wait for the realtor to call out to the seller or what have you. I, I keep you in contact, but more importantly, I keep you protected with your time because I know that you have other deals that you have to work with. Um, and the, the last thing you want to do is babysit this file in, in escrow. Let me right. take care of that. Yeah. You know, so when they look at you as, as, you know, as kind of like their assistant and we play to that, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like they, they'll like that because that means they're delegating a lot of the tedious responsibilities to you and they'll right. like working with, it's kind of like a, like a loan officer assistant, right? A lot of good stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, get to it these next couple of weeks, and then I'll schedule our next one-on-one. Yeah, you, do that? you can schedule okay. it whenever you want. Okay. Cool. Sounds good.